This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Emily Chan from Hong Kong tells us about her work as director of the Centre for Disaster and Medical Humanitarian Response. Hello, Emily. Hi. Could you tell us about the overall aims of the Centre for Disaster and Medical Humanitarian Response? Right. The centre, actually, we have an acronym for it, CCOUC. It targets to use evidence-based methodology like disaster epidemiology and um, some interventions to understand what we, what is the best way to deal with a disaster and to study disaster in areas of the world which probably at this moment a major gap of knowledge. Why did you choose to collaborate with the University of Oxford? We start to work with Oxford in 2007 when that funding opportunity comes along for climate change and health study in urban settings. And we start along with working with Professor Jeremy Farah. He becomes a very important partner with us. And the platform that we managed to build in doing the climate change related research lead us to think that potentially, if we want to do more, we should expand the topic into disaster response. Because as we all know, with climate change, there will be more disaster. And in Asia, which hosts 85% of disasters, 75% of global economic loss, is probably a good uh, expanding platform to do more. And given the fact that Oxford is a good platform for that supports innovation and creative research, as long as it's scientifically sound, to, to solve perhaps human health related problems. So we decided that we should go into and do and start at the center with um, a focus in disaster and medical humanitarian response. How is climate change affecting your research? Being someone who is interested about the human health impact of disaster, um, climate change is definitely a topic that we need to focus on because um, we know that, that he, the impact of climate change is enormous to population, especially in urban settings. For instance, in places like Hong Kong, Tokyo, these are locations where it is highly densely populated and there are enormous like, inequalities in the city by, by in terms of health outcomes. And there's only very limited known about the human health impact of climate change in those environments. So as a result, the direction of the research has to be, for the 21st century, how climate change is impacting population, and most important of all, how this disaster associated with climate change may be affecting public health system, service delivery, I mean, disease patterns, and most important of all, the human health um, outcomes. Can you tell us about your research in rural Chinese villages? We have this program called the Ten Village Ethnic Minority Project in China. Essentially how it started was that um, in 2009, we received this um, need of support to, um, to engage in a disaster relief in the rural communities um, in an area, essentially is the origin of Yangtze River. And at that juncture, what happened was um, we ventured into the village nine months post-disaster. We realized that um, there's technically no reconstruction because resources are not there. They're ethnic minority groups and a lot of policy doesn't reach them. So what we did is, of course, we helped with the medical response. And in the course of the, the response, we actually realized there's a lot of things can be done in those communities. So since then, together with the staff, with students, with our collaborators, we decided to build a program that looks into what is the best way to provide, to support, and to not only transfer our technical knowledge, scientific findings to local communities. And actually, what we did since then was we have been building project sites in remote areas of China with the criteria of their methnic minority base, which is non-Han Chinese. They are extreme poverty, less than $1.25 per person, per household. And most important of all, they are disaster-prone communities. And in these communities, we usually work with them for 24 months, and we make use of the technical basis of disaster epidemiology, um, interventions that was proven evidence-based in terms of how you deliver health message in communities where literacy level is very low, and we work with them. So we go into the community, we do have education, we empower them with methodology we believe would enhance their response, disaster response capacity, and then we chart the impact. For those communities we work with, um, the, the disaster preparedness is at least 40% increased, and also there's a major uh, self-efficacy improvement of what they should do to protect their own health and also the disaster outcomes. And as of now, we are planning to do another five sites in other parts of China for the next two years. Has this led to any conclusions about disaster epidemiology? 
Disaster epidemiology is one of the best public health medical tool to understand, analyze, and perhaps put together evidence-based intervention to help to mitigate the adverse impact of um, disaster for population. Because um, it's a good tool, you need to apply the knowledge. But from our research in rural communities, in climate change and disaster response, we realized that if we manage to train the people on this particular methodology and potentially devise new ways to apply this methodology through research, it's the best way to support community to improve their response, policy making, and most important of all, get our scientists into the field to do something useful to improve be the being of our population. What are the centre's plans for the future? I think um, the team who decide to join and engage in doing disaster related research, at the end of the day, what they're trying to do is to be able to do more for population who is affected by disasters and humanitarian, humanitarian crises. And um, what we aim to do is to take the opportunity to do more research to understand what's happened to the population and hopefully through that devise some good approach to address their needs. And second of all, it's a good platform for people who are interested to solve very difficult problems, okay, technical problems in the field with their scientific methodology. So we hope that with the center, it provides a platform for scientists to join us to look at this challenge for human beings for 21st century. And last but not least, we take this as an opportunity to train up our students because we honestly believe that our students will have this multiple effect in the future. They are the ones who are going to bring the knowledge and expand it in the field of studies. And um, honestly, from my point of view, anyone who's interested to do work related to public health and medicine, I mean, they should always at least have some exposure of how they should respond and put together scientific evidence in a crisis or in an extreme setting because that is the best way to see how well you know your stuff.